In this video, I want to talk about some trading questions that you need to ask yourself and that you need to find answers to before you become a real trader and you go live with your account. And these are questions that I've battled with for a long time. And um, I've actually created an Excel sheet that helps me find the answer to these questions. And I will supply this Excel sheet to you and I will go through it um, so that you can go through it yourself and put your own numbers into it and figure out the answers to these questions yourself. And the reason that you need to do this exercise is that we as traders need to eliminate all fear and doubt that we can possibly eliminate. And every time you have a question in your head, it sort of uh, cultivates this doubt uh, when you are trading. And uh, the more questions we can answer, the more we can eliminate these. So basically, it's the same thing that you probably heard a thousand times before, and that is to have a freaking plan before you start doing anything. And um, but it's also it's not just about the plan it's also to know yourself and and have an expectancy so let's see uh, before we go into the excel sheet and start looking at the different numbers and putting numbers in and and see what they can do um uh, let's see what questions we need to answer here so let me so one question that i think every trader is asking themselves early on at least is if their edge if they have an edge in the market and if they are able themselves to uh, utilize that edge uh, at maximum efficiency basically am i good enough as a trader <clears throat> and you need to ask yourself when you are ready to go live so um, you need to find out whether you have an edge or not and then you can go live and start uh, leave uh, start to uh, basically doing um, live trading with real money i see a lot of uh, people asking on forums and on here on youtube uh, if um, you know young people that are asking uh, gurus on youtube uh, i've done really well lately in my trading i'm thinking of um, jumping out of school and uh, start trading for a living instead so if you're going to rely on trading in your uh, as a main source of income you should never ask that question if you even have that question you haven't done the homework you need to know how much money you're going to make how much where you're going to be in five years from now uh, how much money you need every month to survive etc etc and if you haven't done that calculation then you're not ready to go live uh, and, and start you're ready to go live but you're not ready to start relying on your trading as your main source of income and we're not going to go really deep into that part today because it involves figuring out how much money you have in the bank account what liabilities you have um, and uh, how much expenses you can you you, you must uh, be able to pay and um, there's a lady called uh, Judy McNee. I, th I think she's uh, used to be called Judy V, but uh, I think she got married. And uh, you can find her over at uh, Tribe of Traders. Uh, Tribe of Traders. She's got a whole program where you basically go through all your expenses and um, you build sort of a, um, a financial thermometer. Um, uh, and you, you investigate your relationship to money and all kinds of things. So you can uh, do an in-depth uh, thing on that if you are thinking about um, starting to uh, rely on trading as an income. But uh, for me, uh, I'm not quite there yet. I'm sort of um, still thinking about going live. So I'm on the first uh, point here to go live. And the third one is when do you reach financial independence and um, you know some people skip right to that one um, they go direct from paper trading i think they're going to be financially independent and, and rich and uh, if you do that you are 
you just haven't done your homework again and you're probably a little bit delusional. You, you might as well take a lottery ticket because if you're going to go from small account, paper trading directly to financial independence, you need um, a lot of leverage and a lot of luck. So why not just take a lottery ticket instead? So what we're going to do today is much more calculated and we'll set up um, uh, at least a year long plan. Um, and you can you can extrapolate that to five years if you want. You need to have an expectancy of what to expect when you're trading and what you going, what returns you're going to to have. So how many wins and losses are you going to have uh, on a given month, uh, on on a week, and um, before you put on a trade, uh, is that trade good enough in terms of risk reward? Um, is your whole trading business worth it? Because really, uh, if you're not beating the index on a yearly basis, um, then you might as well just buy an index fund and uh, save yourself some some fees and a lot of time in front of the computer. So um, really what you're fighting is the index. And if you have an edge and if you're making money, will you be able to, uh, what will compounding look like if you start putting um, putting that back into the trading business? Um, and also you need to answer how often should you trade? I mean, uh, let's say you took, you're, you're trading the four hour and you took six trades in one day. Is that okay? Or is that a lot? Um, have you too much risk in the market and so on and so forth? Those are things that you need to decide and also how long you should be in the trade. So, uh, if, if you don't know how long you're in trades generally, or if you have, trades are gone for long and some trades are go, go on for a very short period of time, then uh, you, you might need to be aware of that at least. So uh, that's all to reduce uh, fear and doubt. So, so th these are some of the questions that we can answer. Also, um, um, how you should trade and what suits you is also very important to figure out. There are many ways to skin a cat and um, no doubt you have tried multiple strategies and multiple ways of moving your stop loss and, uh, and so on and so forth. But really there are many strategies that could work, uh, but you need to find and tweak them so that they fit your personality. So for example, um, should you have a large win rate or a large risk to reward ratio on your trades. So we'll go into that uh, topic in depth and, and look at that uh, as well. And you can decide for yourself what you want. Uh, how big should your trades be? Are you putting on huge trades uh, and you trading less often? Or are you putting on small trades and trade very often? Those type of things. Um, how much risk are you, are you putting on? And how do you take profit? So let's say you put on a trade and it immediately goes into profit uh, and you get a huge momentum bar. Should you take profit or should you let it play out even longer? Those are things that you, you should eliminate all doubt around these topics. If you have that, it could mean that you somehow manipulate the, the trade in a way that over time is not useful to you. Should you, let's say you have a large uh, stop loss and um, so maybe you can then use a stop, stop loss mitigation or uh, loss mitigation strategy where you actually exit trades in when you see danger. Um, if you have a very small stop loss, you will not be able to do that. So you need to think about these things. And where should you place your stop loss? Do you, should you um, have a large one or should you have a very tight stop loss? This is all related to your risk to reward ratio and your win ratio as well. So let's uh, go into the Excel sheet now uh, that uh, you will be able to download if you want. And uh, I make no guarantees that everything here it works perfectly. If you find any bugs or uh, if you can make improvements to it, uh, please feel free and uh, contact me here on YouTube if you made some something good with it and I'll take a look. Anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So uh, this Excel sheet uh, has a bunch of 
in data that you need to figure out and enter basically. So how many trades are you taking each month and what risk to reward ratio does your strategy have? Uh, and what win rate does your strategy have? So you need to find these out through back testing or forward testing. Uh, basically, you need to run your strategy for a while and you need to know these numbers. But you can also uh, uh, put different numbers in here to see what would suit you better. Is this a good enough uh, risk to reward ratio uh, or is this a good enough win rate? So uh, you can play around with that because it all relates to to these other numbers as well, uh, the end, uh, total equation here. And how much capital do you have? So here I've entered uh, $20,000. So let's say that you have saved up some money and you're starting your account with $20,000. Um, uh, so you put that number in here. And, and this is also very important uh, uh, that it relates to all the other numbers uh, in a huge way and risk per trade so how much risk are you putting on on each trade and I'll talk about that in a bit as well so we have how many days you on average are in a trade so uh, uh, for example are you going to take a hundred trades per month <clears throat> or um, um, that relates then to your maximum total risk. So if you take a lot of trades each month, then you're going to have a lot of simultaneous trades on at the same time. That means you have a lot of total risk in the market. And so the max total risk comes into play here as well. Okay, fees. So uh, let's say that you enter the trade and that cost ten dollars and then you exit the trade and that cost ten dollars um, and and you have to figure that out with your uh, broker so um, uh, this has to do how much capital uh, how much uh, you take how much uh, the position size that you take basically usually it's some percentage of that uh, what if you scale out then you might have uh, three or four exits uh, and then you might have to bump this number up a little bit. Let's first have a little discussion on uh, the relationship between uh, risk to reward ratio and win rate. So the win rate is how many trades you make money on and uh, you can have a large win rate and make a lot of money. You can have a large win rate and make uh, a loss. And the same goes for risk to reward. So you can have a big risk to reward and you can make a lot of money and you can have a, a big risk to reward and lose a lot of money. So these two, they play together. And uh, everybody that are novice will say that I want both. I want a high risk to reward and a high win rate. But usually uh, over time, it won't play out like that. So these are sort of a tug and war between each other. So if you go for a higher win rate, uh, then you're going to get a lower risk to reward ratio, ratio usually and, um, and vice versa. So to illustrate that point, let me switch over, over to trading view. And uh, let's say that um, we want to um, um, we want a high risk to reward ratio. So what that would mean is that um, you will take a trade on a higher time frame. Sorry, you will take a trade on a lower time frame. Let's say you take the trade here uh, above this candle. For some reason, you say that uh, this will be. This is a long here. So this is my risk. The red area is my risk. And uh, I will target, let's say I will target these um, highs here and for a first target. And then I will target this these highs here for a second target. So let me just put my tool here. So that will be one to seven, nine risk to reward ratio. And maybe I want to go an even even lower time frame to uh, to reduce risk even more and get an even higher one. Uh, the second target would be a 2.87. You can see the number here, uh, risk to reward ratio. So that is 
a high, uh, pretty high ratio. And I know some people that are using six and eight and, and these types of things. So in order to get that, you need to go to a lower time frame and enter your trade very surgically. And then you have to define your targets on a higher time frame in order to, to make the trade run uh, because you will get pullbacks here. So um, the problem with that Everything has a downside. Everything you decide to do has a downside. So let's say that you decide that you're going to do that and you're going to have a, a high risk to reward ratio. That means it will get some really good trades occasionally. So let's say that you, for some reason, you, you decided that this was a long and you set your stop loss on this time frame and then you're still targeting up here. Now we have a, a 3 to, uh, to 8, 3.8 risk to reward ratio but you will stop, be stopped out here. So, um, of course, you can play with buffers and stuff like that, but uh, it illustrates the point that these two are related. So, psychologically, this will be, um, you will have a string of losers before you get a winner. But when you do get a winner, it will offset many of the losers. So, um, you will be able to, you will have to psychologically withstand a lot of losses and you will get a low win rate so um, you will basically you will lose this trade and then you will try again and this, you will think that this is a, a less good trade but you take it again maybe you get stopped up a third time and so on and so forth eventually you, you'll get a winner and it will offset hopefully the other ones so uh, I speculate that it's not great for beginners because be as beginners we need more uh, positive reinforcement when we trade. So a high win ratio and taking small bites out of the market I think is more suitable for a beginner. And also when you are trailing a stop later on uh, you need to be able to judge whether you should exit the trade or whether you should... Uh, uh, keep it going so you be, need to be able to better judge the market is this um, is this pullback a dangerous pullback is it a reversal basically or is it just something natural a natural movement of the market and in the beginning you won't be able to judge that very well so I think having um, having a a larger stop loss uh, will actually uh, give you a higher win rate and um, you take your profits a little bit earlier. But if you play that too hard, as you will see in the Excel sheet, you will get into trouble as well. So so if I have a huge stop loss, let's say I entered this one, and I'm, I'm thinking that I should be below this low here, and maybe allow for a fake breakout of that low as well. So I'm putting my stop loss quite far down, and I'm targeting and I'm targeting a one-to-one -one here. So uh, I will have to endure this drawdown, this drawdown, and then uh, I will be into profit. And the, the chance that I get accidentally stopped out is so much lower when you do this. But I also only, in this case, I only had a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. So I will need to have a win rate that is more than 50% in order to, to survive. So let's uh, look at that hypothesis inside the Excel sheet. Uh, so uh, let's say I have a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio and I have a 50% win rate. I am actually losing money here. You can see that I'm losing $240 per month on that. And that has to do with the fees. If I didn't have any fees, if it was free to trade, I would lose nothing, of course, and I would make nothing as well. So uh, maybe I need I need to be a little bit better than a monkey. So um, let's say I have a 60% win rate and uh, now I am making money. I'm making $240 a month instead. And um, maybe we can improve our risk to reward ratio and set that to 1.4 maybe. So, um, but when you do that, uh, you will lose some more trades. So let's say that I am getting a win rate of 55 now instead. 
So that means I'm actually making quite good money. I'm making $528. So you can play around with these and see how that plays out. Um, down here you can see how much you make each month. And also uh, on this statistics side, um, we're taking 12 trades now and we win 55% of those. And that means that we're taking 2.9 trades per week. So you can have that expectancy that on Monday in the beginning of the week, you can sit down and you can think, I'm going to take, try to take about three trades this week. So you're not going to jump on everything. Because if you do that, let's say that you bump this number up to uh, 24 and you see it turns red. I will explain why it turns red uh, in a minute. But let's say um, you take a lot of trades instead. Of course, you're going to make more money with this. You're going to make a thousand bucks each month instead. The problem is that that will also um, uh, reduce your win rate most likely and maybe even your risk to reward uh, your average risk to reward because you're taking less quality trades most likely so um, you need to find a sweet spot and uh, so let's say we're taking 12 trades uh, that's three three trades per week and you have an expectancy about half of them will be winners and half of them will be losers uh, and over over the time over time you will get slightly more winners because you only have a 55 percent win rate <clears throat> so uh, that's that can set your expectancy so if you put on a trade and you immediately lose the trade and it's it's um, beginning of the week you can think to yourself that okay i lost this one i can lose maybe one more this week and then i need to to win so if if you lose three in a row maybe you should be thinking about what you're doing basically but you you know how many trades you can with how many losses you can withstand <clears throat> and another thing with that is that uh, when you, we can talk about risk later, uh, max total risk, but um, people that use a lot of le leverage, they, um, uh, let's say they have good numbers here and they, they take a much more risk per trade. So they take uh, maybe, if you use leverage, you can, you can some people take 100%, but let's say you take 20% uh, risk. What happens when you leverage is that you increase the risk per trade. That's all that happens. And um, even if you have a 55% win rate, you can have... What, what happens if you have 10 losses in a row and then you have 12 wins after that? That means that you will have blown your account. Uh, you still have a win rate of 55, but you've blown your account... account uh, either way so um, that it's why it's so dangerous to have too much risk on per trade because you never know in which order your winners and losers come so that's something to ponder as well okay so uh, uncompounded return per year this is how much money you will make in a year from this strategy so you sit there and you take um, uh, 12 trades each month and you're making 31 percent uh, per year so that's actually pretty close to index last year i think so uh, with this strategy it's obviously not good enough and you might as well just buy an index fund and um, go with uh, play with your kids or something if you have kids uh, or your girlfriend or, or boyfriend or whatever so you're just wasting time in front of the monitor. You need to have a better strategy. So um, you're not beating. So, so we're always looking at um, other ways of making uh, an income uh, and how we need to beat that. Otherwise, there's no point, really. So um, let's go down the line here and uh, look at capital. So what if we had uh, uh, less money? So we only had $10,000. Now we're only making $144 a month and we're actually only making 17% per year. So if you're really early days and you don't have a big account yet because you're very careful and you're very careful with your risk to reward ratio, you as soon as you get profit, you take it. 
and as soon as you uh, you have big stop losses and um, uh, and so on and so forth you're not going to make much money unfortunately so it takes money to make money so either you have to improve these two values or you have to increase your risk so let's say i bump up the risk to two percent so now i'm making 528 again unfortunately uh, we have a red here now so if we can only take if we can only risk six percent of our total account at the same time so that is how many trades you have on at the same time so if i'm taking um, two percent risk per trade that means if i i don't want to lose the more than six percent in any one time let's say coronavirus comes around a black swan event and the entire market is tanking and i lose all open trades uh, stop loss uh, stop loss triggers on all my open trades that means i will lose six percent so um, uh, if i want to have a 10k account and I'm taking two uh, trades, that means I can only have three trades on at the same time. If I'm taking 1%, that means I can have six trades on at the same time. And uh, that's within the limit. So that's why if I go 2% here, I need to go for more quality trades. And let's see how many I need to take. I need to take, I can take six. I can take even seven and this has to do also with how many how many days you're, you stay in a trade basically so whenever you exit a trade you free up risk uh, that you can use to take another trade and uh, one thing i don't calculate is that if you don't if you take too few trades so if you if you have one percent here and you take your you're planning to take 12 trades but you don't find any trades then of course you, you your yearly uh, percentage is going to go down as well so i don't take that into account in the calculation but that's something to be mindful of that you need to constantly trade so uh, we can play with this let's say that uh, i don't want to be in front of my monitor that much i only want to take like uh, six trades per month so and i have a 20k account again so uh, let me put in, so, so what happens now is that I'm making $264 a month on this and it's not very good. So let's say that, uh, okay, I'm taking less trades now. So now I can take um, more risk per trade. So let's, let's bump this up to 2%. And these numbers, these uh, 1%, 2%, 6%, 6%, 6%, these are what I have gotten recommended pretty much everywhere I went. So if I read books about risk management um, for traders and I watch YouTube videos, these numbers come up all the time. Risk 1% to 2% per trade and take no more than 6% of your entire account. So, um, so that's, uh, some, that's where I got these numbers from. So these are good starting points for you. If you have a super small account, maybe you want to take more risk. That's something I've heard as well. So if you have this 10K account, you, maybe you want to take 4% risk. Uh, but maybe you want to limit the number of trades. So now I'm taking only six trades and I'm making actually more money because I'm risking more per trade. So I'm being more, I'm being more um, selective in what trades I take. So uh, this is something that you need to figure out for yourself uh, if you want to trade a lot, uh, if you, you love the, the game and uh, you're ready to maybe dial down a little bit on your win rate. So uh, if you only take six trades and you know that these six trades are good trades, uh, maybe your win rate will go up a little bit. So let's put that up to 60. And uh, now we're starting to make uh, pretty good uh, money and we're also making 56% per year, which is a lot better than the index. If, if you can make this kind of money, uh, you can make 4.6% per month, uh, 56 per year. I mean, you're killing it, really killing it. 
and um, uh, I think others, uh, there are investors that would be willing to put money into you if you could do that uh, consistently. Uh, and so one thing that you need to really be truthful about is when putting these values in, you need to, to know these values. And it's not enough that you check your strategy in, for a month and put in the risk to reward ratio. You, I think you, you need like six months of uh, of uh, data at least before you uh, before you know uh, or at least in the ballpark of knowing what your real win rate and risk to reward is because the market goes in cycles and um, um, during this corona time how did you do did you are you able to to make money in a downward market or do you have to wait for that market to come out and you start making money again when it starts uh, being bullish again um, are you as good a short trader as you are a long trader? How will how will a black swan event um, how will it affect these numbers uh, over time? So so you need the the consistency uh, built into these variables, and you need to be really truthful about them. Because if you say that okay, my last trade was uh, you know six to one, and uh, I've I've taken I've won sixty percent of my trades this month. Uh, you you get astronomical values here, and uh, they have nothing to do with reality s- seen over a data set of maybe five hundred trades. So um, let's see. Um, I think we were on one point four. So these are Im- uh, important things to consider. And the max total risk, uh, it also puts a limit, like I said, on on uh, how many trades you can have on at the same time and how much money you can make from, from that. Fees are interesting as well. Risk mitigation is something I put in. If you're using a larger stop loss, let's go back to trading view and let's put it in a trade. Uh, let's put in um, um, let's put in a trade here like we did before and let's just um, put some buffer on let's say we we wanted to go along here and we wanted to um, target uh, this high up here and so we entered the trade here and um, it starts going against us uh, after a while and down here I decide that okay this looks bad um, I want to um, basically I should take some off here to mitigate I don't want to take a full R multiple or risk multiple I want, don't want to take my full so how much were we risking let's see in the excel sheet we taking 2% risk per trade so what is that? That's risk per trade is 400. So I'm, I'm risking actually $400 each trade. So if I can mitigate that, uh, so let's say I, s- I sell here for half my position here for, for a loss. Uh, that means I only have half the risk on. So if it goes all the way down here, I've saved myself some money basically. And in this case, uh, if I had done that, it would have been a bad idea. Uh, I should have let my my trade play out. But uh, obviously, there's no point in mitigating if you have really tight stops. Uh, if you go in for high risk to reward ratios, you you will not get a chance to mitigate. You will just get stopped out. But if you have a huge stop uh, like this, uh, then this is stop is only for emergencies, basically. And you are doing some kind of judgment on how the trade is moving when you exit parts of the trade so we can factor that in so let's say we have a a 55 percent win ratio we're making how much are we making we're making 600 uh, per uh, per month and we're actually risking quite a lot when we enter trades but we also mitigate some of that so let's say we mitigate uh, 25 percent of that on average so that means that um, if I uh, sell half here, I've mitigated uh, a quarter of my risk. And um, uh, that actually bumps up the value a little bit. So uh, if I can avoid full R 
a full R of loss. So an R is one unit of risk. So it's 400 in this case. We have this red section. This is a full R. So if I don't touch my stop loss and I get stopped out, I lose one R. And one R in this case is going to be 400. So if I can mitigate that uh, on average 25%, uh, then I make a lot more. Uh, but most likely this is going to uh, reduce my uh, my win rate or my risk to reward or something like that so maybe maybe i only get 1.2 now because i i don't have as much winnings anymore as well and some of them uh, will be bad decisions so um so what's the best thing to do here is to leave the stop loss alone and have a 1.4 that would give me 648 or is it better to get a 1.2 and mitigate that so that's 654 so that's uh, actually not as good and it's a lot of work so uh, to to constantly monitor and and figure out the stop losses so if that's the equation you might as well leave it alone and let the trade play out so but uh, it all has to do with your strategy of course but let's say we have this now and uh, we're making 39% per year, which is beating the index. It's pretty respectable. That means that we're having 3.3 winners per month. And we have 2.7 losers per month and we have a risk per trade of 400. So every time we, we uh, lose a trade, we lose 400. And uh, we always win a little bit more than we lose. So we, when we win, we win uh, 480. And um, um, because I mitigated uh, 25%, I actually lose only 300 uh, per trade and uh, on average. And uh, the sum of all my winning trades is $1,500. Sum of losing trades are 810. Uh, maximum total risk, uh, I'm risking 6% of 20,000 is uh, 1,200. And uh, I can have a maximum of three trades on at the same time. So in the beginning of the week, I'm um, looking at uh, finding one and a half trade. So they have to be really good ones. And I pay less fees when I trade fewer trades. So obviously, if you if you could trade with these numbers, but more find more trades, you'll be making more money, but you will also be paying more fees. So um, on small accounts that really really matters so you can actually really ruin your account with fees if you're not careful and this excel sheet will help you figure that out if you're above that threshold or not account injection is a really interesting one that i added as well this is um, has to do with compounding and let's say that you're now making these um, uh, you have a result of 600 dollars per trade so um, we'll come into account injection that's basically when you also put money in from you have a work uh, on the side um, or you're trading on the side and uh, but you take money from elsewhere and you put into your trading account and you use that in your trades that's uh, i call that in account injection and it's uh, a way to increase your uh, winnings basically um, from from this account perspective and it will make wonders if you have a good strategy that's making you money and with the compounding so let's look at the compounding now so this is what will happen i'm making uh, the first month of the year i'm making 654 dollars from my 20k account and i'm taking six trades this is pretty good numbers i'm pretty happy with that um and uh, I don't think a lot of traders will beat that actually uh, over time. So that's really, really good. So um, um, we're making 654 first month and uh, we're risking 400. So uh, now we have an account size. The first month after the first month is done, we have an account size of 20,654 instead. So uh, if we put that new money that we made to work, it means that we're risking, we're still risking 2% per trade. So we're now risking $413 per trade and it goes on like that. So next month we're, we're, we're uh, putting some more money to work that we made and uh, uh, we're actually making $9,425 this first year. 
and then you can take this number and you can plug that into um, add that on top of this uh, number for the second year and and that will be your you will get a much bigger number for the second year so uh, obviously this is just an, a theoretical uh, calculation and um, you may um, experience some months that are not as good as this um, during the year but it will give you a target to work with so um, so that's for this sheet um, i will put a download link that you can uh, you can uh, you, you can use this sheet to your own liking and play around with it and see what numbers you have or what you would like to have or figure out what your target is and um, should I improve my risk to reward ratio should I improve my win rate should I take so let's say that you actually have a good uh, um, a very good win rate a risk to reward rate but you have a lousy win rate that's actually a good exercise as well let's do that uh, let's take a 35 percent win rate and we take a uh, four to one uh, or something like that see what that that's huge money that you're making on that so but can you withstand that you know, psychologically you know losing uh, three uh, just basically you're you winning three and a half trades out of ten and um you just constantly taking new trades like that and and if you only take six trades and you lose more than half of them uh, maybe you can take that if you get these big winners and they make 4.0 so um, that just proves that you can have a less than uh, you can be less good than the monkey on the win rate uh, the monkey throwing darts at the, at the board and um uh, but if you have this risk to reward ratio and you're able to to find those trades then you can still make a lot of money so okay so let's look at the second tab here because uh, what i do is that i take uh, profits multiple times and sometimes that's good um, sometimes that is bad so let's figure that out with this uh, uh, this little sheet here i'm actually going to to hide the win rate now just not to confuse it too much and I will bring it back later on so this sheet calculates a winning trades um, um, final risk to reward ratio based on uh, you taking profit in different uh, parts so let's say that we are uh, we divide up our trade into three different um, um, three different take profits or one or two or three so what that means is that uh, like i said i would have um, i would have a take profit maybe here and i would have a second take profit here and then maybe i i will trail the last one usually what i do is that i have um, my take profit um, at one to one so I need to have a sensible stop loss. Let's say we do it like this. So that would be my first uh, at one to one. That means I reduce my risk by 50% and I take uh, take half off and I, that means I reduce, reduce my risk 50%. So if it goes down and uh, take, um, take out my stop loss, I will basically lose my fees only. It's a break even trade and um, uh, then i will have some uh, target point on the chart that i think it could reach uh, so these highs i will maybe take those so that's a 168 so let's plug these numbers in uh, so i will take on the first position i will take uh, um, i will take 50 percent at one uh, risk to reward um, ratio one so then I will take a quarter off at what did we have? We had 168, 1.68. And then we'll take the remainder off at uh, 287. 2.87. So that would give me a 1 to 6 risk to reward ratio if it manages to get all the way up to my final um, 
take profit position. So here, um, so you can use this calculator to figure out: Am I messing up uh, the trades? Uh, am I messing up my uh, realized um, risk to reward ratio, my my R multiple, on um, on taking these partial profits too early? So if uh, if I'm taking this as 1.2, for example, I'm taking this at 1.6 then I have a 1.2 uh, risk to reward ratio instead and I've created a lot of work for myself so maybe I should not t I should I shouldn't use this third one and I should take 50 here uh, at 1.3 now 1.3 so um, you can you can play with this maybe I should do the first one at 1.1 and uh, this one at 1.4 um, well, you can play around with it, but let's uh, go back to what we had in the visual example. Uh, I think it was like that. So now we have a respectable 1.6 risk to reward ratio. And um, let's say that I on the winning trades, I always get to this 1.0 here and I limit my risk. Um, it's 80% uh, chance that I get to my second one. And it's 25% um, chance it gets to my third one. Oops, now I only have a 1 to 1 risk to reward ratio. That is not a good risk reward ratio. So uh, I've created a lot of work. I'm sitting there hoping for it to go uh, all the way up there and it really does. So you need to track these things and figure out um, whether you should do it or not. Uh, if you should take one, two or three uh, profits. Um, if you're just taking one, you don't need this sheet. But um, if you're taking multiple uh, positions off you need to figure out whether you're doing yourself a favor or not so I uh, use that as well to look into how you take profit all right uh, I think that's it for now I've been talking for a while now um, I'm going to go drink a glass of water and uh, I hope you find this video useful uh, and give it, giving it some useful insights. Let me know in the comment section uh, what you think, if uh, I missed something, if you have any ideas or, uh, or whatever. And please like and subscribe, of course. Thank you. Bye for now. If you're planning on signing up for a paid account on TradingView, please help me out and use my affiliate link below. If you like this video and want more content like this, Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.